Good afternoon. Or should I say evening? Uh, morning. Morning? At any rate, I am the Game Master. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Before we begin, there is something I must tell you. You see, my job is to draw you into this world with my voice and cards. Which is why I believe it best for you to play with the sound on. In fact, I insist on it. However, as you can see, my voice is subtitled, so you can always read along as well. Now then, are you ready? Let's begin. <clears throat> Welcome to Voice of Cards. You are about to take the first steps of your adventure. Through a realm of sword and sorcery you will travel. Battling bloodthirsty... I have every faith you will accomplish great things here. I... I am merely a witness to your exploit. Now then, your departure draws nigh. May your journey be a safe one. This is Castle Advent. Queen Nilla reigned. Three white-clad adventurers have gathered here at the Queen's Summit. Present yourselves, O oh faithful of the Ivory Order. From upon her throne, the queen regards the adventurers. So you are disciples of the, the youngest of the three steps forward. I am Winifred of the Ivory Order, your majesty, she said. She bows, glancing to her two companions. In response, the stern-looking one inclines his head and brusquely names himself Berwin. The older man is the picture of courtesy, as he genuflects and introduces himself as Hedwin. It is these three our story follows today. The queen acknowledges the fellowship with a nod. And as someone has stolen the royal treasure, I bid you... Under normal circumstances, I would entrust this to my soldiers, but I do not wish to spread... It seems the troubled queen is judged she can entrust this matter to none but the ivory... It is our honor to serve you, your majesty. And thus, the quest falls. Short of any clues that could lead them to the culprit, however, they press the queen for further information. The fellowship asks the queen what the royal treasure is. The queen describes a bottle containing a certain liquid. Without it, she trails off but the desperation in her voice suggests its loss could spell disaster for the kingdom. The fellowship asks the queen if she knows anything. The queen says witnesses might be found at Nexton. Usually, one would expect recompense. As demanding a reward would go against the tenants of the Ivory Order, the queen, however, has already said she will reward the fellowship. It seems the royal treasure is just that important. Pray Terry no longer here. I await the fellowship bows and takes their leave. We can waste no time finding the treasure, Winifred strides toward town. Wait, cries Berwin, blocking Winifred's path. A monster. You dare stand in our way? Hedwig lunges at the fellowship. Route the enemy.
showing no signs of weariness from battle, though Edwin inspects the remains of their foe. Winifred gives a grim nod at his word. Mayhap the treasure's theft and the monster's behavior. First things first. The Fellowship needs to gather more information. To Nexton they set their sights. Welcome to Nexton, hails a man. The Fellowship asks if he's heard anything about the theft. The man's eyes widen. He leans close to Winifred and whispers, Welcome to Nexton. How may I help you? The proprietor inquires. Too scared to leave town with all those monsters out there. The woman sighs. The man helpfully advises you take the opportunity to purchase equipment and curatives while you are in town. A woman sits hunched over by the side of the road. Upon catching sight of the Fellowship, she calls out for their aid. She's sprained her ankle and needs you to take her to the nearby apothecary. Winifred rushes to her and helps her up. Berwin lifts the woman onto his back, and the Fellowship sets out in search of an apothecary. the apothecary. After taking a curative, the woman begins hopping up. Nothing holds a candle to ivory order medicine. She turns to the fellowship, her eyes widening. It seems she's only now realized the fellowship. Or the woman takes each of their hands in turn, thanking them for their service. The Ivory Order is famous for providing medical supplies throughout. Every smile the Order brings to someone's face makes Winifred proud to be a disciple. claims he saw a suspicious someone leaving the castle grounds. He didn't get a good look at their face, but says they were. The Fellowship thanks the man for the useful information. The woman begs the Fellowship for their autographs. I know there's nothing to worry about with... Upon asking, the woman says she was a, t a strange creature, she says. Nothing but bones, and it clutched a bottle of medicine as if its life depended on it. It would be unwise to leave the town with so few leads. Perhaps you'd have the Fellowship ask around for more information. Apparently, there's a monster lurking around the outskirts of town. Rumors claim the monster fled to the west. 
Thanks to the information gleaned, the first clue was the Queen's description. Then there's the bony figure seen fleeing town. From all that information, the Fellowship distills the thief's true identity. Realization strikes Winifred. I know the monster made of bones, Hedwin interjects. Berwin nods in agreement, as if to say, another sage pronouncement from the great. Winifred clears her throat, proclaims that the Fellowship shall head west, out of town, and walks off. Fight.
fellowship moves westward, only to be unnerved by the sight of a human figure moving through the trees. The presence of large pa- I beg your pardon, but did you catch sight of a mo- He gives her a puzzled look. There's nothing out- I suspect you might find your quarry there. The fellowship exchange glances and nod, as if to say, the traveler hoists his packs, suggests the fellowship speak to the fisherman on the western shore, and takes his leave. Our rock appeared. It seems primed to explode. The bizarre rock transformed into an aqua rock. The only way out of this fight is through it. And fight. The fellowship comes upon an anchored ship. Close by, a fisherman of exquisite fisheries. This is no time for lustful reverie. That vessel is cursed, the fisherman mutters, trembling. Night after night, it leaves port without a soul. This, to the fisherman's mind, his head drops into his hands. With but a single dispeller, I am certain I could lift it and sail away. Alas, the fellowship find themselves. They resolve to return to Nexton and find some. 